Welcome to the ORU Sports Spotlight, everyone. I'm Scott Higgins. Well, you know, it is that time of year. It is basketball season. The women grinding through a rough early season schedule while the men are trying to live up to some lofty expectations. That's what a trip to the Sweet 16 will do for you, but Coach Paul Mills will take that every single time. We'll sit down with Coach Mills to catch up on those early season dramatics. Plus, it's World Series time. Now, the Atlanta Braves, they're one thing, but did you know the Golden Eagles are also in a fall World Series? Those stories plus a dynamite drop-in on Deputy Athletic Director Paul Cabas. That's coming up on the ORU Sports Spotlight. But first up, it's men's basketball. When you reach this week's 16 and nearly go to the Elite Eight, what do you do for an encore? Well, that's what we want to know from Coach Paul Mills, who joined me earlier this week. Well, Paul, uh, season just getting started. Uh, tell me about the thoughts of you and your players about Still thinking about the Sweet 16 and having to equal that. We've just started a season. Is it fair to say that some of the guys might feel pressure about last year? Is that possible? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, simply because, you, you one, they're a mature group. So we, we don't have a bunch of freshmen who are now sophomores. Um, we have a number of, of four-year guys. DJ is a four-year guy. Mm -hmm. Frank is a four-year guy. Carlos is a four-year guy. And so then you have Max and Kareem. Um, Max is in his third, and then Kareem in his second at the Division One level of those five returners. And then from a bench perspective, um, the freshmen who are now sophomores are playing bigger roles. And then you have other players who were at other Division One schools in, in Isaac McBride and, and Trey who have good experience, Trey's experience in the NCAA tournament. So I don't think it's pressure because they're a little bit older. Um, I do think that, that some of it is they're trying to navigate what are we walking into? Yeah. How cold is the water? Uh, yeah. How warm is the water? Uh, how does my body temperature need to adjust? And what we can't do is that. Um, we, we have to basically set the temperature. There's obviously a difference um, in, in a thermometer and, and a thermostat, and we have to be the thermostat rather than I thought we were to a degree a thermometer. Yeah. Uh, we wanted to test the other team. Let's see where they were at before we decided something. So having an older group, I think we're more thermostat oriented yeah. than thermometer oriented. Most of the guys are back. You've got some great new players. So is the first month of the season for you as the head coach, you're a little bit like a mad scientist trying to figure out how these formulas work? Yeah, I think the first 50 practices in the first eight games. And so I've always yeah. thought after eight games and about 50 practices, um, you can get a, get a pretty good idea about things that you need to course correct or things that you need to continue to do because we understand it's working well. So we are, this is about practice number 40 for us. Okay. Um, we'll play our third game. Um, by the time I think we get to our eighth game, we'll have 50 practices under our belt. And I think this team will develop a new chemistry, uh, a new idea about hey, this is what we need to course correct, or this is what we need to continue to get good at. Um, and then the things that you get good at, you need to be great at by the time you get to conference. So I think there's still some identification level uh, being made, but I do believe that from a time perspective, uh, we're, we're probably about three or four weeks away from really getting an idea about what this team is going to look like. And nestled into those three weeks are... A couple of games, home games, the fans are very excited about uh, Oklahoma State and Tulsa, one being a local rival, one being a right-here-in-the-city rival. The fans think, we got to win these games, but you as the coach, is it like any other game for you guys? Yes. I yep. mean, uh, it's great to have an opportunity to play schools um, in your own gym, and so you're looking forward to playing those schools, but at the same time, you do expect to win. Um, you will prepare to win. But it's not the end-all, be-all. You know, um, uh, we'll approach it as, hey, we're giving everything in our power in order to make sure that we win this game. But it isn't a defining moment for your season. It could be. Yeah. Um, they, they, you know, sometimes just the momentum that comes with 
home games or even road games. Those things can allow you to catapult your season, but uh, we're, we're obviously looking forward to two very good opponents uh, in a newly renovated Navy Center. We'll take a break. When we come back, more with Paul Mills. You know, these Oklahoma State games are all fun for the fans, but really when it comes down to it, the conference plays the big deal. What do you know already about the conference? I don't know if you look ahead. What is you, as a head coach, what do you what do you think about the conference? Well, I paid attention to a little bit, yeah. but not too much. I paid attention to scores. Um, South Dakota State is obviously very good. Mm -hmm. They're predicted to, to win the league in the preseason conference bowl. You know, North Dakota State is very good. I know they're going through some injuries right now, I think probably as a lot of teams are. And then we saw a UMKC team that beat Missouri, uh, mm -hmm. an SEC school by 20-plus. Um, you've seen other teams, Western Illinois, that went to Nebraska and beat Nebraska. So you've seen teams in our league go on the road and beat Power 5 schools. So you understand the conference is really good. Uh, has been, will continue to be. You haven't dug into it in regards right. to the opponents, but just from the peripheral looking at the scores and paying attention to what's going on, you do realize that this is a long road yes. uh, and it's going to be a tough one. You know, all you guys do is go to the Sweet 16, win your conference, and yet you're still not chosen to win the conference in the preseason. Does that bother you just a little bit? Uh, not really, okay. uh, simply because you realize that in a super season, super senior season with COVID, um, the other teams got all of their players yeah, back. True. And so they, they won the league, South Dakota State did a year ago, North Dakota State finished second yeah. a year ago. And so, hey, in hindsight, if you're getting all of your players back, finish one and two, Yes, you're going to be predicted to be one and two. And uh, we love the whole idea of one. You have to prove yourself. You know, nobody's going to give you anything. Right. So you are going to have to show up every single night. But um, there is a level at which you say, hey, at the end of the day, we beat North Dakota State twice. We right. beat South Dakota State twice. We are game uh, for the competition. So we're looking forward to it. We know how good those teams are. We have nothing but respect for them. Um, but at the end of the day, these games get played on the court. Sure they do. And at the same time, as they're returning guys, you return most everybody, and you've got some great newcomers. So technically, ORU should be, no matter how far ORU goes this year, should be a better team than last year, right? Yeah, I do. I feel that we're better than we were a year ago. I feel like even even though we didn't show it necessarily in our first game, yeah. uh, I do think we are better than we are a year ago. Not only because we have players with more experience who've actually gotten better, mm -hmm. but I think we've added pieces that allowed our team to get better. So uh, we wholeheartedly believe we're better than we were a year ago. What did that Sweet 16 run do for you on the recruiting trail this summer? Yeah, it helps. I mean, <laughs> uh, before you would sometimes explain to kids uh, where ORU was, we're located in Tulsa. Yeah. Uh, some of those questions are out the window. I can recall calling a, a particular player, and he said, man, I've been waiting on this call. And, and so I think the exposure, you know, more than 12 million people we're able to watch our television games, and a lot of basketball-minded people, basketball-minded players are watching your game at the yeah. same time. So I think all of those things help. Obviously, the exposure uh, is, is terrific uh, from a variety of yeah. venues, not only social media and television, but even in print and text messages yeah. being exchanged amongst friends about things that are occurring. Um, to put our name out there as much as possible helps. So if you're one of these guys who wrote these basketball previews, one of these writers, where would you put ORU if you're having to predict before the season? ORU will finish where in the conference season? What's the postseason going to be like if there is a postseason? Right? Yeah, if it, if, it, if it was up to me just understanding yeah. uh, how we're wired over here, we kind of enjoy this underdog mentality. Uh, to get the most out of ORU, yeah. if I was a writer, I'd have predicted us last. Uh, <laughs> I, I just knew that what that yeah. would do for our guys, and I know what it does for me. <laughs> um, it it kind of keeps you motivated and keeps you hungry. You know, we talk a lot about Jim Collins' book about the enemy of great is good. Yeah. Um, let's yeah. let's not be content with being good. 
Uh, let's not allow contentment not to fuel your hunger. Let's have a strong desire sure. to be the best that we can possibly be. So I'd have predicted us last. Uh, <laughs> so that way we could have thrown a whole lot more gasoline on a fire right. that's already there. Outstanding, Paul. Thank you. Let's take a short time out, but when we come back, we'll find out why the ORU volleyball team is so improved this season. Could it be a chemistry experiment? Plus, we'll talk baseball fall World Series style. We'll be back right after this. On the right side to tie the game up at two apiece. All the way to the other end. Hello to Shane Weaver, reintroducing himself to the Maybe Center crowd. Puts the Golden Eagles right back on top. Mark, that is the first half. There's that backdoor cut to Aismith. First points of the game for Max. Made one for two, missed one from three. Another turnover, Jurgens in transition, lobs it up, look out, a two-hand jam for Kareem Thompson. Yeah, they haven't looked bunched up, only maybe a couple of times. Aismith for three, hello, block. 95 seconds to play before halftime. Heat check three for Max. Oh, ho, ho, ho. nothing but net for Max Aismith. See, he shot better than 40% for the three. There's not a lot of guys that can do that. Look out, McBride getting hot. Knocks down back-to-back -back threes. Not really a three-point shooting threat. Lawrence lobs it up for Tukaucic. One dribble, reverse layup, good. Luka Tukaucic has his first points as the Golden Eagle. And give to Katie Scott. Spin move through contact and a great, beautiful shot from Trinity Moore. Getting pressed. Pass all the way around. What a catch from Delaney Nix. Moving towards her left. Ariel Walker open look three. Good. ORU on top by one. Half. Nix stepping up. Hard off the backboard. Good rebound for Moore. Delaney Nix forcing the issue. Open look three. Kenny Jo Lippy connects. Golden Eagles up by six. Been going with her team within one. Reagan Shoemaker, catch and shoot three. Big shot for Reagan Shoemaker. So right before the Formula One series, we vote on our captains, and then they pair two captains together, and they draft our teams. Uh, we're broken up into blue and gold, and it's based off who the captains choose, and then we just play a five-game series. And the captains are basically the coaches. They, uh, they, they drew up the lineups. They chose who's pitching. They made substitutions, but we also did get to pick one coach, be like third base coach. So we had Tuffy. And we had uh, Turk be our coach. The whole fall was a gigantic competition, so it's kind of the culmination of it. And just really competitive games, and it's the most game like we get because yeah. we don't play any outside schools. So. I think this year, since we, we, we didn't play anyone outside of ORU, it was pretty competitive inside the team. Um, we definitely wanted to win, so there was a little bit more meaning this year than there was last year because uh, the winners got to um, shoot the losers in paintball, so it was pretty fun. <laughs> the atmosphere was more competitive than a lot of our other scrimmages just because we had a lot of fans there and everyone wanted to win. And then the last day was family day, so everyone's family was there, so everyone really wanted to play well for their family and kind of show everyone what we could do. The first game, the atmosphere was really competitive because it came down to the last half inning, and um, that kind of led into the whole weekend. So the rest of the weekend was kind of chippy, kind of competitive, but uh, Gold Squad clutched it with two games, so sorry about it. <laughs> the team is very different from last year because we had so many guys graduate and leave and stuff, and so we have a lot of new guys, so it's just kind of been getting everyone accustomed to what we do here and how we go about things. And it's also about getting back to the championship game in the Summit League because we didn't end how we wanted to end. I definitely think this year's team, compared to what we saw last year, I feel like we fit better as a team. That may be because of COVID last year and not having a locker room and everything, but this year I feel like we're really clicking. The best part of the fall so far has been how competitive it is. Like, we have a lot of open spots and a lot of good guys competing for it, so it's just been very competitive and it's been a lot of fun. I guess I'm most looking forward to the spring because you get to travel with everybody, um, have fun, compete. That's probably the biggest thing, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see how well this team does. Thank you, gentlemen. Now we go from baseball to the boss. 
Deputy Athletic Director Paul Cabas now joins us in studio to talk about his new job and, and what's going on. Paul, welcome aboard. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate you being here. You've only been here a few months, and I guess your main charge is we got to raise some money, don't we? A lot of expenses to take care of. Without a doubt. It's been great getting a chance to engage with our fan base, with our alums, student athletes and coaches, and I really think the momentum here at ORU is just palpable. It's incredible to see where things are going and what we got to do to continue to roll up our sleeves and keep moving this thing forward. You come to us from Louisiana Tech. A little bit different story down there, but there are some similarities, right? It is, without a doubt. What we're trying to do from growing our footprint um, to engaging the fan base, and it's really been neat to see the investment that we place on our 16 sports here at ORU and also the faith-based mission. It's something yes. that aligned with our family, with my wife, Emily, and our two children. Um, it's something that we've really gravitated towards, and we're excited to get out and really spread what ORU has and what it offers with our student athletes and coaches. You know, five years ago, there was no deputy athletic director, and things were a little different. But just recently, with Tim Johnson coming on as AD and the basketball team's success, it's just blown up, isn't it? It is, and just our staffing and how we're able to grow this thing has been incredible. Um, college athletics is an arms race with resources yeah. and facilities, and with us breaking ground just recently on the Mike Carter Athletic Center, that just shows you the com commitment and investment that it takes to have these young people be successful. Um, we need to compete not only locally, regionally, Regionally, but nationally, we want to move ORU to the top, top of everyone's mind frame. Well, now that you've been on the job for a little bit, what do you see as your biggest challenge personally in the next year? I really think for us, it's, I don't even look at it as a challenge, but how do we go out and see as many possible people as we possibly can? Sure. You know, ORU was trending nationwide back in March on two different occasions to where there was the number one topic on social media. And so for us, it's we got to go out and spread that as much as we possibly can. So if we can clone ourselves, that would be a great thing. <laughs> but I really think that we need to go out and see as many alums and supporters as possible um, to provide the resources for these young men and women to be successful. A lot of new faces on the staff. It's a little bit like herding cats, although these cats are coming together, so it's a pretty good group right now. Phenomenal people, people who care deeply about what we're trying to do here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we just had success with our courtside countdown event just a couple of weeks ago. That was outstanding, the biggest crowd we've ever had, the most money that we brought in for that event. Um, you know, kicking off basketball season and have some more events coming up. Our diamond dinner for baseball will be in February. Yes. We'll have a golf outing in June, so it's we're always staying busy <laughs> and, you know, yeah. incredibly fortunate that we have really good people here that are all pulling in the right direction. Outstanding. Paul, welcome aboard. We appreciate it very, very much. Thanks, Scott. Folks, one thing an athletic director likes to hear is that athletics is on the upswing. Well, this fall it certainly is, specifically volleyball, with a Coach of the Year candidate in Frank Craig. A little chemistry doesn't hurt either. Back with that story next on the ORU Sports Spotlight. Welcome back, everybody. We're headed down the stretch now with a little bit about a lot. ORU Volleyball. Used to be a thing around here. One just needs to check all the championship banners in the aerobic center. I think it's finally safe to say now volleyball is back. It's a team effort led by a couple of players who've risen to the occasion. Josh Salem sat down for a visit. I'm Secure LaCour. I'm a middle blocker and I'm a junior. I'm Brianne Solaris and I'm a sophomore setter. Our chemistry on the court is pretty professional. Um, we really focus on what play we're going to do next, more so, um, more than what we had done the last play. We look to each other every single play, so we'll look at each other first before we look. I look at other players because everything revolves kind of around our middles because we're really middle focused because that's where our strengths are. Definitely wasn't like this before though. We had a lot of growth and now throughout the season we definitely built a connection that's really good. Yeah, I would say um, our connection is strong just because we really have put a lot of work into it. It's taken a lot of time. It wasn't like something that just instantly clicked, but this year we really figured it out. We communicate a lot on and off the court about volleyball specifics, so we definitely are very professional about that aspect of it. The best thing about playing together on this team, I would say, is um, our love and our like passion for the game is it drives like her passion drives me and we both hold the game in very high regard so her focus and her um, intensity really pushes me like I tell her all the time if she needs to get on me over something and she I give her free permission to just yell or get on me about it just so we can not only make each other better but the team better. One main thing that we focused on this season was our culture. We have our seven aspects and one of our big ones is family. 
So us being able to have that just connection on and off the court, it translates to our play and our, obviously our connection. But it's not something that came easy. We really struggled with it in the beginning. But now we, once we knew like this is gonna be our identity and our core, we, our team really took off and it helped us a lot. The one play that I remember the most was our first game against University of North Dakota. And I set you like a push or a one and no one jumped on you. Oh, yeah. And she just went up and she bounced it on the 12 foot line and just walked off the court. Like it's so cool, so much swag. <laughs> Oh, I do remember one play, um, it was in preseason, she had called a, an A on the back and Rami was in the front and we don't usually do this but we decided on the first play of this game we were just going to run it so I called for it and she said it and there was the blockers weren't there and immediately it was a kill and the rest of that game was good so I would say like starting the game off that way like gets us on a roll for sure. I would say the highlights for this season would be just seeing our not only like our connection grow but our team's connection grow and just the chemistry on the court between all the players has been really amazing to see um, and the maturity that we've developed um, coming from last season which was just like in the beginning of this year to now um, there's been a lot of maturity and growth from the whole team and so I think that's also helped us grow our connection because we don't have to focus on the little things now. We're kind of getting to really just play volleyball. Well, playing under Coach Frank and Coach Nolan, Coach Aubrey, I believe I met Coach Frank around the same time as Secura did in the recruiting process because I'm a grade lower, but I had met him my sophomore year and she had committed her junior year. I appreciate that he really puts us first. He is the backbone of our culture and he's the one who really instilled it and our assistant coaches as well. So it's easy to follow someone who leads by example. This is the first time we played with Coach Noel and Coach Aubrey, but they've been a really good supporting cast. Like one time we went on a preseason tournament trip without Coach Frank due to medical conditions, <laughs> but they were really well dynamic. They worked together, they worked to communicate with us and really appreciate that because we are a team that communicate a lot and need that type of communication together and that type of connection with each other so they're really good in establishing that with us as a coach and player relationship. Yeah and I this is the first time I've really experienced like such a positive coaching and playing environment like I um, it's always been super intense my coaches have always just you know they're just on you and not in the most positive way. I mean, sometimes that really takes away from the game, but Frank and Aubrey and Noel, they all have just really put such a positive environment that it really does feel like a family. And I really enjoy playing volleyball, like not just under them, but like, I feel like they're in the game, like on the court with me, they're just so supportive. Well, that's our show for this week. Thanks for checking in and go Golden Eagles.